Hey family, welcome to the Jamal Bryant Podcast. Let's be clear. Today, we're going to get some clarity. Just because you heard it doesn't mean that it's true. Just because you think you know doesn't mean that it's real. Today, we are going to uh, have an engaging, intimate conversation with one of the most discussed spiritual leaders in America today, Bishop Lamore Whitehead. Welcome, brother. I'm Man, glad to have you. Thank you for having me here, brother. Oh, no, this is a, a pop-up conversation. Uh, in this, our first season, we have never been to anybody's home. Wow. Uh, so thank you for opening up your doors and uh, allowing us to come in uh, and trusting us in this space. I'm grateful. Man, I'm grateful that you had me here, brother. Yeah. And um, thank you for opening your platform for me. No, absolutely. I wanted uh, the world to be able to know you, not from a sound bite. Uh, but for you to uh, really just have your own open heart surgery uh, live on the podcast. Yes. Right, man. Uh, you came to uh, national uh, attention just two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of America in one Sunday was introduced in a crash course on who they thought was Bishop Whitehead. Yeah. Uh, I want to go backwards in our discussion uh, today. Talk to me first about the Sunday morning robbers came into your worship. Oh, man, wow. First of all, I, I like I said, I thank you, man, for um, allowing me this platform and yeah. um, giving me the opportunity. Um, the robbery, wow. Um, that First, can you believe that's been two years? Oh, man. Yeah. That's just, it felt like, uh, felt like it happened yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, wow, such a, a, a touchy place for me because, um, so on that Sunday, you know, we were having communion Sunday. Yeah. And, um, you know, my deaconess was in there white, deacons was in there black, we all had our robes on. And um, um, I was uh, in the pulpit and praise and worship had just ended. And um, I get up and I literally was in the pulpit for maybe nine minutes. And um, I'm in the pulpit, I open my Bible, I started to pray. And um, I'm looking at the um, parishioners, and um, I can see everything that happens first. Yeah. You know, because everybody have their back turned to the door. By and chance, when you go into the story, by chance, I know it's a long time ago. Do you have any memory on what you were preaching that Sunday? You know, um, I was preaching so. I forgot the topic of it, but I know that I was preaching from a subject saying that in order for you and in order for me to preach something to you, I have to go through it first. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what I was saying was um, God allows leaders to go through an experience in order to teach you, mm. you know, and literally once I started to get into the sermon, um, and I never said this to no one before, but there was like a a, a, a rushing like wind, like a, a hot type of wind, and the door opened, but the door opened so suddenly, it just like, nobody opens the door like, like that. All right. And it, so suddenly, then I just seen, I saw three men like low, saying, everybody, nobody moves, nobody move. And when he did that, I immediately, my spirit said, get down because they want you. Mm. Right? Yeah. And if you get down, everything going to be all right. And it happened in a split second in my head. And I said, all right, all right, all right, all right. To alarm and alert my yeah. team, my people. Right. Like, all right, all right, all right, right. Like, I'm going to get down. Nobody do nothing. All right. You know? So I got down. I laid down. And I'm watching. Um, I'm watching them position themselves. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, so... It makes me mad. Yeah, no, I get it. Because where I'm from. Yeah. I ain't never been robbed in my life. Wow. So, um, what is more angering for you, that it happened 
or that within the hour, everybody acted as if it was manufactured. You know, my thing is this, right? If you're going to rob me, you ain't had to do it in there, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you, like I'm, I'm, I'm outside, yeah. you know, I'm a different type of preacher. Like I'm f to the streets, I'm to regular people. I'm walking through projects yeah. with all my jury out. You know, like if you wanted to do something, you had a gun. Yeah. Why are you going to come into God's house? Yeah. You know, why are you going to come to people that, and we, we are unarmed? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm laying down there and I'm watching how these dudes form. One dude had the door. One other guy came straight to the pulpit. And one dude went straight to my wife mm. and my eight month old daughter. Wow. So I'm watching this. So the one guy came and he started taking, he took my wedding band off. He took my bracelet off and he took my watch. And, um, and then there's one guy in front of me because my wife was sitting in front of me and he got the gun to her face. Mm. So me now in my mind, like, yo, do you know who you are? Why are you letting this happen? All right. And all this stuff is happening in a split second. All right. And then I'm hearing, don't move because if you move, they could be, it could be fatal. Mm. So, but I'm seeing a gun in my wife's face. Yeah. And then I see him taking her earrings and then he transferred the gun in his other hand and now it's in my daughter's face. Wow. And my daughter's eight months old. So my wife put my daughter like behind her, beside her. And then the guy that was taking my stuff off, he leaves. The one that was, um, that had the gun in my wife's face, you would think he left too because it was another, it was a guy that was already on me. But no, he gets, he comes back around, he comes up and he say, I know you got more. Mm. So he got the gun to my head. So he, um, they didn't take my, my um, apostle's ring. The other guy just took my wedding band, my watch and my bracelet, but he left my ring on. So he was like, give me this, give me this right here. And he took my uh, apostle ring off. And then he took my, um, I had a Cuban with my cross on. He took that off. And then he was like, where, where, where is that? What else you got? What else you got? So I had my Kaluji collar on. So I had my other chain underneath my, um, my robe, my, yeah. my shirt. And this chain was bigger. This chain was uh, uh, my, my big Cuban link. And um, this is the chain that I had was a hundred carats, but it's underneath my my vest. And um, so he start tapping. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? So I know this is some type of setup. Mm. So he tapping, tapping, tapping. He said, "Yeah, yeah." So he grabs my clergy collar and start yanking me, yanking me, yanking me. And he 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 can't yank this chain off. It's triple lock. You know. He's like, "Take it off." So I took it off, and he took it, and. Um, and he ran out. And when he ran, I jumped up. He hit the door and I went behind him. And my thing in my mind was, I gotta get in my truck and I'm gonna run them over. Yeah. I'm gonna run them over. All I need to do is get in my truck. All right. So I run downstairs and I forgot my key upstairs. So my arm barrel ran up. I said, get my key. He came, got my key. I saw which way they went. So I jumped in my car. My deacons jumped in the car, two of them. And I made a U-turn because I know they can't outrun the car. Right. So I make a turn, you turn, then I make a right turn, and I'm looking, looking like they, can't, they couldn't go too far. They could, they could not. So I'm right. driving, 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 driving. So we drive about two, three, maybe yeah, maybe four blocks down, and then I make a U-turn and come back. So now the police is there, because this happened online. Yeah. So the police is there, and I see them, I come back to the block, and I see the police talking to regular uh, uh, bystanders. Yeah. And I roll the window down, and I'm and I said, um, did y'all see them? So they're telling the police that they jumped in a car. So I must have drove by them and didn't know. Or wow. they jumped in the car and they must have stayed there and I drove by them. Um, so um we just drove drove around the neighborhood, just driving around the neighborhood, just trying to see anything. And we didn't find any any anything. So I came back to the church and um all of the top uh, NYPD officials, they were having my church, and um, then that's when the mayor called me and asked me, was I okay? I said, yeah, I'm all right. 
and I just was dealing with my church. And ironically, um, um, I told my church, I say, I really want to move forward with the word, but I, but they was like, Bishop, nah, this is too heinous mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. But you know, as preachers, when we have a duty, man, you know, we have a duty, and and whatever the devil tried to do, I didn't, you know. So that's what happened. Let me first say I'm glad uh, you okay that uh, your family was safe yeah. and that it didn't go a different way. Uh, I'm, you know, it's funny you say that. Yeah. Because the guy just got killed, the one that put the gun in my wife's face. Yeah. Um, now, th that's what I wanted to get you to because I've heard no stories mm -hmm. that all three have been, <laughs> well, I'm a, a yeah. favor to you because everybody thinks that this just went away and don't know that the three culprits have had an encounter with justice. Yeah, and it's and it's and the thing about it is two of them got caught, I think it was two or three months after. And within those three month period, the world destroyed my name. They all said I set the robbery up for an insurance job. Right. They all said that um that uh it was an inside job and they destroyed my name. And they said I set the robbery up. When two of the men got caught out of the three, um, people started to get quiet. But nobody's talking about the third guy who just got caught in January. He was on a run for over a year. And um, he was in a hotel and he came out with a gun. They surrounded him. He came out with a gun shooting at the marshals, federal marshals, and they killed him. So, wow. Yeah, and this was the one, the one that got killed was the one that put the gun in my wife's face. And they the, confirmed that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's dead. No, they confirmed that this is the guy who oh, was yeah. in the church. Yeah, 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 they confirmed it. Yeah, well, within uh, 24 hours, you were viral. Um, so every late night show, every morning radio show, and it wasn't even about the safety. What was the lead was, I think that they gave estimates of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, not about uh, your child or your welfare. Uh, New York is uh, the home of Reverend Ike. But you are not a prosperity preacher. Not at all. Yes. I uh, And so uh, people assume that you got these gains through people tithing in the church, uh, giving in the church, or handed over their right, right. last will and testament. Uh, how were you able to amass independent wealth? Uh, because what people don't know is you've never taken a salary from your church. Ever. Yeah. Never. And this year, I'll be 11 years as a pastor. Wow. Never once took a salary from my church. Yeah. And um, it, it was so hurtful to me by, and, and it didn't even make sense. You know, the tabloids say I have 20 members, but yet the 20 members is taking care of my whole lifestyle. Right. Right. Um, then they said I got eight members. And then he said the eight, so is the eight members taking care of my lifestyle? So it, it just didn't measure. But to be, I'm not a prosperity preacher. Never yeah. been. Yeah. Right. Um, and, if people do know me, I'm the one who pays the rent for people that need, pays mortgages. I done bought, I think two people in my church, maybe more, maybe three, um, brand new cars yeah. because they're single parents, right? This is what I do that people don't know, right. you know? Um, and to be labeled as stealing from the church and stealing from people, and it's like, no, I'm into real estate. I've been doing real estate over 20 years. Wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've always had a nice car. Just because I got two Rolls Royces now doesn't mean that I took it from the church. Like, I've always, I've had Bentleys, Range Rovers, you, you name it. I had all the cars. That's just me. And I always was into jewelry. I like um, houses. I like to purchase houses, yeah. cars, and jewelry. That's just what I like to do. And, um, and clothes. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, and for them to place me and stigmatize me as um, um, a, a, a rip off, a, a, a rip, I'm ripping people off was yeah. just crazy to me. So um, I've never been a, a prosperity preacher, uh, uh, Jamal. I've never been a, a prosperity preacher. And, I, and, and one of the main things in my ministry when I started it, I said, we're going to pass the collection plate for tithes one time. Whatever you're going to do for God, you're going to do for God, and that's it. Right. You know? So I never try to push nor force anyone to give anything. No. You know? However, but this is the narrative that they created because people have to create a narrative so, therefore, they can not want to come to church. You, you are uh, probably the second most uh, 
media circulated black preacher in America mm. uh, with a church that they claim only had 24 people. Mm. Uh, but you're getting coverage like you passed to Lakewood. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to ask, how do you get the freedom beyond people's opinion? Um, because with all of the glare, all of the discussion, all of the controversy, you didn't come out here in a black suit. Oh, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> right. You're like, hey, if they're going to talk about it, let me give them something to talk about. At what point did you make up in your mind or tell me, did you ever wrestle to say, you know what, Lamar, let me just tone this down. Let me just, the black is too hot. Uh, yeah, yeah, let, <laughs> let me not be the one who wears the chinchilla to the fight and it throws <laughs> off everything. At any point where you're like, okay, I'm I'm a I'm gonna scale this down a little bit. Hey, yeah. How did you get to the place like whatever? Did y'all gonna talk about me have it? If I take the L off my name, would I still be Lamar? If I take the W off my name, would I still be Whitehead? Right? Yeah. I'm not gonna let no one take no letters off my name or out of my name. I'm yeah. who I am. Yeah. Right? And like I tell my ministry, you stop, you die. Mm. Don't let nothing nothing or no one change you. Yeah. Okay. And I believe in who God made me. And um you know, my my preachers, my publicists, and all of them say, Bishop, 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 you got to calm down, just calm down. But when I try to, then I feel like I'm not being me. And I can't be phony. I'm, I'm just this type of person. Right. What you see is what you get. Right. So if you're going to hate, you're going to hate regardless. Yeah. Right? Whether I ride in a Rolls Royce or not, broke people are going to still be broke. Yeah. Right? I, if if I want to get into a Honda, you still who you are. Right. So I'm not going to um, <laughs> change because of your inconsistencies. Right. We got the same 24 hours in a day. Right. Now, if I had 25 hours, then I say, let me tone it down because God gave me an advantage. Right. But the hell that I got to go through to be Lamar Whitehead. Right. I'm going to flatter myself. I'm going to live the. I only get to live one life. That's right. Not to mention that. You know, I grew up in the most roughest part of Brooklyn there was and there is, right? And I survived. So just because people don't like what I wear, why? Because it's name brand? Like, I, so, so I, I had to make it make sense. Yeah. Right? And that's why I was telling my team, like, okay, now you have to make it make sense to me in order for me to, 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 to say, okay, right? Yeah. And y'all not making sense. I know it's hot. I know the heat is hot. But at the end of the day, too much is given, much is required. Yeah. And I, I I tell them this, the God I serve used me as a vessel. That's right. right. And the vessel that he's using is for revelation. So if I back out of what I'm supposed to face head on, how can God use me to give me to, to, to give me revelation? Right. And through this experience, I'm able to help so many people. But if I wasn't attacked the way I was, I wouldn't be able to help the people that I'm helping now. Right. Yeah. So many people say, Bishop, how do you have a smile on your face? Jamal, I really trust Jesus. Wow. Right. I know I don't look like it because of I look like a rapper. People say you're around a lot of rappers and they, oh, you a Freud. You can say whatever you want to say. Yeah. But I really trust Jesus. Like I have a relationship with with my God. Right. Yeah. And when you have a relationship with God and I know I'm preaching to the choir, but when you have a relationship with God. Right. Nobody else's opinion matters. Right. So I know who God made me and I'm going to continue to push. So, you know, you, you expect me to come out in a black suit. I'm going to come out in a Fendi suit. <laughs> right. that, that, so that's just what it is. And I'm not I'm never going to let you control what God has ordained. Yeah. And that's my model. So a, a lot of people, Bishop, uh, who have made up uh, their own opinion with about you without ever knowing you felt justified when you went to court. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you're just coming out of court, and uh, I want us to talk about that uh, journey for you, that faith walk that you're in presently. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, the courts in uh, New York, said that an older woman uh, got uh, defrauded mm -hmm. and found you guilty. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to talk about what were the charges and where you are now. So... Um, <clears throat> As the world know, I was found guilty of five charges. Um, the first charge was uh, wire fraud. It was um, defrauding um, Pauling Anderson for $90,000. Uh, 
The second charge was Polly Ann's is the lady's name. Yes. And this old lady, how old is she? She's she's only fifty, I think, three years old. She's not old <laughs> at all. Right. This this is all the hype, right? Yeah. This is all the hype. Okay. Uh, elderly lady. Oh, now you're not supposed to take from nobody, but they put they yes. put extra to it right. to make me look like just this bad pastor, right? Because right? you have to understand, Jamal, the reason why people don't like Bishop is for two reasons, right? He set up the robbery for at his church and he robbed the old lady. Yeah. When you clear up those two narratives, now what? Yeah. Right. So we cleared up the robbery already. I didn't set it up. Now let's clear this up. Yeah. Right. So um, the second charge is um, attempt wire fraud of Brandon Belmonte. They never even said what was attempted to be taken at all. Right. They said yes. it was a building and they said it was money. Attempt extortion was the third charge where they said that I was extorting Brandon Belmonte. Yeah. Right. For five thousand dollars. Now, Brandon related to this old lady. How? No. No, Rashid Anderson was his her son. Okay. But Brandon Belmonte was a federal informant that played as if he's a victim because they wanted to take down the mayor, Eric Adams. So we're going to get into that. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth charge was lying to an FBI agent. OK, we're going to talk about that. And the fifth charge was wire fraud um, for an allegedly trying to take two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So let's go to the, the first count. Um, Pauline Anderson. Now, before I can get to the first count, I got to tell you guys the entire picture. So, Mayor Eric Adams is the second black mayor of New York City. That's right. And everybody knows that me and Eric are very close. Yeah. I am one of the top three closest to him, period. Right? Um, and we have gained a relationship. He's been my mentor for a long time. And um, he's poured into me. We've never did any business. Never. Right. And um, so my wife car, my wife car had got um, into an accident. So this young gentleman, Brandon Belmonte, he owned a, um, a body shop. Huh. He was inter introduced, introduced to me through another friend of mine. So he was like, yeah, I rent cars and I got a body shop. If you need me, let me know. So my wife, car well my sister-in-law car got uh into an accident first he yeah. fixed that car so i said he did the good job with that let me let him do my wife's car so my wife got into an accident somebody hit her car and i said brother i need you to fix the car he said all right cool i'm gonna send you a rental car i said no problem so he sends me a rental car comes pick the car up my wife's car but the rental car he gave me was broken oh lord now my my my, my daughter was just born yeah. right my my baby and um she was born in November, so she's three months old, screaming, yelling, and um, um, so my wife, um, I told him that my wife's car was into an accident. He said that, um, all right, cool, I'll give you a rental car. You don't have to worry about anything, and I'll come pick your wife's car up. So he comes pick the, my wife's car up, and then um, he um, sends a rental car. Now, the rental car doesn't work. It was an Escalade um, 2000, like, 19 2020 escalate and it doesn't work my wife calls me and says it's shaking it's shaking i said just get out the car i'll, I'll take care so i called me said listen whatever you have to pay for another rental car i'll give it back no problem um i did not know that he was a federal informant right now i know this right and now it's starting to make it made sense so he never was fixing the car never was fixing the car and I would go down there and I said, yo, the car's still the same. Why? So we would be arguing yeah. about the car, right? So he would call me knowing that he just already agitated me and he's recording me and I didn't even know he was recording me. So he's recording me in rage and in anger. And this is how he's saying that I extorted him because I told him I need my $5,000 so I can do what I need to do. You're not gonna get away with my $5,000. So now we're in the months of March and he's like, all right, don't worry about it. I'm gonna give you the money. Listen, I got some property that I want to sell you. Uh, I know you. I'll be watching your videos, and I want to. I want you to. Um, I, I want. To, I own properties in the Bronx. So I said, "All right, cool. You know, um, let me know because what I wanted to do, I wanted to buy more apartment complexes so I can house homeless and shelter people there." Yeah. So I didn't know that he was lying to me about all of this, but yet the FBI was already involved with him, and. Now they have created this whole narrative that I'm trying to get property from him in exchange for favors with the mayor. But 
I'm just telling you information that I know now, but then I didn't know. So he's just telling me about properties that he owned that I want to purchase. Right. Right. He didn't own the properties. He never sent me any of the properties. So now I'm saying to him, brother, you are playing games with me. I don't need nothing from you. Finish my wife's car. Give me my $5,000 and go your way. Right. So he began to argue with me, argue with me. I didn't know I'm being recorded. Yeah. So now he's making it seem like I'm violent. But no, I'm arguing with you about my wife's car. I'm arguing with you about giving me what I need. So then he says, listen, I'm going to bring the money to you or whatever. I'm going to bring the money to you and we're going to take care of it. So he comes to my house. He bring the $5,000 and he says, listen. So he, he told me how um, he, his, him and his father has a hard money um, company yeah. and I own uh, a 40 unit co um, complex and I was doing renovations he was in, like, in Connecticut. Okay. So, and by the way, um, I own, as an African-American, I own the largest piece of property in Hartford, Connecticut. Wow. As African-American, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this is another reason why I'm being attacked, right? And they know this, yeah. right? So um, so now I'm renovating out there. He's like, listen, um, since we're going to do business, because he's trying to clean everything up now, since we're going to do business, um, uh, I want you to um, let us lend you the money or whatever. I said, all right, you can lend me the money, no problem. He started to renege on that. I'm saying, listen, send me your send me your attorney's information. Here's my attorney information. He's right. reneging on that. Wow. Now that I do know right. what's going on, they're recording me. And the FBI and him are working together. So now he goes to the FBI or in April, but he was already with them. Yeah. He goes to the FBI in April and says, This man is trying to extort me. Right. And he said, I put him on the phone with the mayor of New York. And the mayor of New York or FaceTime told him to do business with me and we're gonna do things under the table for him. So he tells that, and this is all in, and I want, I want the world to understand this. This is all documented. And these are in statements called 302s, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is not privy to the world, right? So he says that I put him on FaceTime with the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, and Eric Adams told him to do business with me and we're gonna do big things and we're gonna do things under the table and all this other stuff he said. So then he says that I told him that I was going to act like we're purchasing the properties and um, I was going to get fraudulent federal um, um, grants for homeless wow. and shelters, right? Wow. But actually I'm going to flip the building as free market rent. So all this is in my documentation and these are all the lies that him and the FBI are teaming up to do. So now the FBI, I go for a walk one day and I'm going to get to the Pauline so y'all can understand exactly why, um, how this whole thing came about. So um, in May, I went viral because they started to call me the bling bling bishop yeah. when I turned the young man in. Because yeah. when I turned them in, I pulled up to the precinct in my Rolls Royce and I had a Fendi jacket on. So they called me the bling bling bishop. They didn't care anything about um, the man who died or the man that, that killed them. It was all about the bling bling bishop. Right. So now a week later after that, the FBI was in front of my house. I go out for my morning walk, yeah. they jump out the car. Now, um, I know I'm working in, 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 in a little backwards, but here is count four and y'all gonna understand the line to the FBI, why they said it. Yeah. So when they jump out the car on me, they said, you're not under arrest, but um, we have a warrant for your phone, right? So I put my hands up. They snatched the phone out of my hand. I said, what is this about? So what is this about? He said, um, we have a warrant for your phone. If you want to talk, we could talk. I said, and they said, we got a warrant for your church. So people don't know this. Wow. Yeah, we got a warrant for your church. I said, for my church? So I said, can we get out of the streets? Because I don't want my neighbors to see all of this. And let's go inside of my home. And I got the video too, right? Um, so we go inside of my house. And I said, what are you talking about? You got a warrant for my church. And why are y'all taking my phone? And he said, well, we heard his guns in your church. Wow. Right. Now, I want y'all to I want y'all to really put your thinking caps on. OK, this is June 7th. Excuse me, June 8th. The FBI comes to my house and said, we heard you got guns in your church. Mm. OK, I said guns in my church. I said, you kidding me? So they said, listen, we don't want you. We want you. We want the mayor of New York. We want you to help us get the mayor of New York. I said, what? I said, we pause you right here for one minute here. I'm a law school dropout. Right. I, I've never taken a bar. I've never graduated from law school. Right. But I want to read you your rights. 
because you're making some amazing claims against the FBI. Right, right. And so I wanted to pause for just one moment right, right. to just remind you the ops is watching. I know. All so right. you're standing by this witness yes. that they are committed to bringing down this black male of New York. One thousand percent. That you are the casualty of your loyalty to friendship. One thousand percent. Okay. One thousand percent. Okay. So when we're on the side of my house, they're saying, um, you know, we want you to help us with the mayor. You know, I said, what? I said, listen, call my lawyer, right? So now um, what I'm trying to do is, so I, I said, let me get some numbers out of my phone so I can get somebody to open the church because I was renting the building. Right. And I said, I don't want y'all to kick the door down because it was a glass door. So I said, um, so they give me the phone numbers. They give me the phone numbers. So I leave, I go back in and I tell my wife, yo, look, these FBI out there. And I told her what was going on. Yeah. So I try to call the owners of the building. They wasn't picking up because this is like six in the morning. So everybody sleep. Um, I'm calling, calling, couldn't get them. So I go back out and say, listen, I'm trying to get them. Just give me a minute. Make a long story short. Um, I finally get them on the phone. I come back out and I said, look, I said, look, um, she's going to open the door for you. Here's her number. Y'all can go. So they said, listen, oh, so this is what they said to me. They said, do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? Because they just took this phone. Right. Says, so do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? Let's just talk. We want to talk to you. I said, no. Call my lawyer. Right? They charged me for lying because they said that they asked me, yes. do I have another phone? You didn't ask me that. You wanted me to talk against the mayor. And you said, come on. Do you have another cell phone that we can call you on? No, you can't call me on another cell phone. You have my lawyer, All right. and that's it. You don't need to call me. So for for the count four lying to a federal agent, it was because of that. Wow. That's it. Wow. That's it, right? The, now, why in your mind and processing this, would they expend all of this energy on you and not use all of that energy on bring down Mayor Adams when the FBI has a history of pulling down black leaders? Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is this, right? Um, what I've learned now yes. is that uh, these FBI guys, they don't even want the truth, uh -huh. right? They don't even want the truth. Yes. If they can get somebody close to you that will lie, they got you, Yeah. right? And I found that out to be found guilty of things that I did not commit. I'm 1,000% innocent, like 1,000%. Yeah. So you indict me and then you find me guilty of lying to an FBI agent when in the 302, in his statement, it says that he asked me, do I have another cell phone that I can call? Yeah. It says it there. Right. And I still get found guilty of it. Mm. Still get found. And the thing about it, and let me tell you this about, about what happened. So this FBI agent, right? The lead uh, agent, right? He didn't testify. Actually, why? Why? Because he lied on six search warrants to the judge. Wow. Yeah. He lied on six search warrants to the judge. So when you look at the search warrant, right, there's something called an application affidavit for a search warrant. Yeah. So in order for you to get the search warrant, you have to give the judge a sworn statement saying, if we take this phone, we are going to get information out of this phone pertaining to whatever we're saying we're looking for. Right. So in the first two search warrants, it was all about the mayor, Eric Adams. Um, the whole search warrant wow. was about Eric Adams. Yeah. See, you guys don't know this because you don't have the search warrant. Yeah. Right? So all you can do is speculate. So all of the reasons for the search warrant was about Eric Adams. But they called him a New York State uh, government official. That's what they called him. Yeah. So the reason why they got the search warrant was because the FBI said, they recorded, they video recorded me on the phone with Brandon Belmonte saying, I just got, I, um, I just got the phone with the mayor, um, the mayor, uh, Eric Adams and the meeting for us. I mean, the meeting is already set up. So the FBI said they recorded this showing that I was about to do something illegal with the mayor and yeah, Brandon crazy. Belmonte. Crazy. Right? Yes. So... So now, a week, no, three days before trial, the, the, F, um, the, the, the federal prosecutors turn over evidence. They turn over the transcripts of all the, of the call. No way. Right? So on the transcripts, 
it got us, it has to say all of the people that participated. That's right. So I told my lawyers, I said, where's the FBI agent? He's the one that said that he recorded it and he put it in the search warrant. Right. They called the, the federal prosecutor and said, um, where is the FBI agent on these transcripts? Did he lie? And they was like, no, he, no, he didn't lie. We're going to get right back to you. And they said, yes, that wasn't him. Wow. Right? So then they say, well, it was an error. An error? You have six search warrants to six different federal judges. And you're going to see, and it says the same thing in all of the search warrants. Not to mention, they now turn over, right, the chain of custody of this recording. Yeah. Right? This recording, and you guys don't know this, but this recording that he used to get this um, search warrant, yeah. they said it was done on May 5th, right? Yeah. 2022, right? We get the, the chain of custody paperwork. It was recorded on May 5th, so they say, right. by and only by the informant, Brandon Belmonte. Yeah. He used two phones. But more, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It gets better. They don't get this video until 19 days later. Wow. So they don't know if it's documented, if it's been altered, altered. Nothing. 19 days later. So we didn't have this information. So this is why now we're putting it in for a new trial. We're putting it in to set aside the verdict. And um, there's a, so many calamities. But let me just go a little first so I can get into Pauline Anderson. So now, June 8th, they come, they take my phones. And then they come back June, I believe, 27th. They come in my house. They threaten me to that they was going to slam my face on the floor. Wow. If I didn't give them my cell phone. Wow. Right. So I guess this is a new phone or the one they took prior. No, this is my other phone. Okay. That I had, yeah. Right. Because what they did was um, they saw that. Um, well, let me just stay on this. So they get my phone. And they say, open the phone. I said, I'm not opening the phone. Yeah. They said, well, we're going to slam you on the floor and we're going to put your face there Ooh. or we're going to bend your fingers to make you open the phone. Wow. And he, goes, he told me, I said, the, the search warrant don't say that. And he says, um, um, yes, it does. I said, where the search warrant at? And he says, we don't have it. So anyway, um, my wife had my attorney on. She said, just open the phone. Don't worry about it. I open the phone. They leave. Now, remember this. Yeah. Right? On June 8th, they said, that it was guns in my church. Right. Three weeks later, my church was robbed. I just want y'all to put all this together. Three weeks later, my church was robbed. I'm just going to put that out in the air. Okay? Yeah. So, now y'all going to see more about that. But anyway, um, now my church was robbed. July 24th. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Brandon Belmonte has been working with them since the beginning of January, excuse me, uh, January 2022, right? Yeah. Good old Larry Reed gets involved now. Okay. Uh oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. People don't know that he also called the FBI out because when he was making jokes about my, uh, the robbery of my church, I went at him, okay? And called him every name that I met. And... What he did was he called the FBI as well. And he was on the phone with Brandon Belmonte, the FBI informant. And the reason why I'm saying this is because of this, right? We black preachers, they're trying to take us out yeah. by any means necessary. And all that talk where he was sitting there saying, I guarantee y'all he'll get locked up in two to three months. Yeah. I guarantee y'all. You want to know why he knew that? Because him and Brandon Belmonte was working together, mm. giving the FBI information. And that's why he played one time in one of his broadcasts a message from the FBI agent. They was calling him too. So I just want to put that out there yeah. that you guys have to stop believing these YouTubers because they're liars. And what they do is they will set a black man up or a preacher up to make it look like something that it really wasn't. So I want to say that the reason why I'm putting all this together, Jamal, is this. The FBI didn't have nothing on me. 
And what they had to do was make it look like a scheme. So this is why they needed Pauline Anderson. Wow. Okay. Pauline Anderson. I'm mind blown right now. Yeah. I'm just showing yeah. you guys how this worked and how this stuff was put together. Yeah. So Pauline Anderson was already suing me for $90,000 a year and a half ago. This was not nothing new. So what the FBI did was they needed to orchestrate and say that this was a scheme that Bishop Whitehead was doing. And in order for it to be a scheme, it has to be more than one person. It had to be two people. Right. So they pulled this civil case out and turned this civil case into a criminal matter. So now in the civil case, they're, they're, they were suing me saying that I took 90000 from them, right, mm. to purchase my own home, right? One we in right now? No, another one okay. that I never purchased. That was all a lie. Yeah. The reason why Rashid Anderson, who was her son, the reason why he did that was because I removed him out of my ministry. I need y'all to understand this. Pastors get attacked by disgruntled members OK, so so now he is upset that I removed him from my church. OK, and when I removed him from my church, I helped him get his own home. I married him. I paid his mortgage. I did so much for him and his him and his wife. Yeah. OK, once he got his own, I mean, once he got his his property, he wanted to be a part of my real estate firm. I said, well, brother, you got to have money in order to be a part of this. All right. He said, well, I got to try and get it. I'm going to ask some family members. I said, when you get it, you get it, whatever. So then he comes back to me and say, my mother and some other people are going to help me. So I said, okay, well, you do what you got to do with them right. or whatever. Right. So I didn't talk. To, I never, not one time I ever asked this lady for no money. And we went through the whole trial. Not, we said not one time. Was she a member of your church? Never. The lady is not the a member of your church. The, she was never a member of my ministry. Never. She came to my church maybe once when, I, when her son got ordained as a, as a minister. Wow. She was never a, mini, a, a, a member of my ministry. Never tied. And I think she said she sold one time on the prayer line. She never even gave money in my church. Never. So now we have a disgruntled minister that has been removed from my ministry because he was disrespectful to other members and disrespectful to me. Right. So when I sat him down, right, the very next day he said, well, I want my money back. And I said, you want your money back? I said, we have a contract. Um, didn't you give your mother her contract? Did, since you said your mother was getting, right. gave you the money. Right. And I said, we have, me and you have an oral contract that the money has to be in this firm for a year. And now all of a sudden, you want this. Um, the next wants day. The, the, yeah, you want it back because you got um, sat down. So um, his mother texts me for the first time. This is the first communication via text, via call. This is the first ever, ever. And she right. said, um, we want the money back. And I said, now, you signed a contract with your son. You ain't have nothing to do with me. And she threatened me and said, because I was running for borough president during that time. So she said, I'm going to call the police. I'm going to call um, the police. I'm going to call the news. And I'm going to call your campaign. I said, do what you got to do then. You, 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 you threatening me with what? Like for what? Right. So um, now, granted, this was a year. For, this was for a year um, uh, agreement. They had, um, he just gave me the money November 30th, 2020. And now May 2021, it's only five months. For a one-year contract. For a one-year contract, right? It's only five months. And I just gave him $6,000 because, well, I gave him 5000 because he said his um, mother wanted to purchase property in Jamaica. So I said, listen, right. you can't keep touching. This is it. So I gave him the $5,000 and I gave him an additional $1,000 just to give to his mom because he said his agreement with his mother was giving her $100 a month for him, for her, for him, uh, for her loaning the money right, to him. Right. I never had nothing to do with it. Never had nothing to do with it. And we went through this with trial. I never text this lady, never called this lady ever, ever. So they, they have you at this point facing how many years? Well, the, 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 um, wire fraud, uh, deals with, uh, well, wire fraud, the maximum is 20 years for wire fraud. However, what they're saying the wire fraud is, is they said that, I text them. That's what they said. They're saying because the ninety thousand dollars. They're not saying that that's, that was a wire fraud. They're saying that the see people don't understand wire fraud is just communication. Mm -hmm. If you go on the phone with them, that's wire fraud. Yeah. If you go online, that's wire fraud. Yeah. If you that that's what that is, right? So all of this 
which made this is a civil case, which we're still in civil court. All right. However, since I'm not working with the FBI to take down the mayor, they made this into a criminal matter. So now when you go to um now when you go to counts two or counts three, right, that's Brandon Belmonte. Right? Brandon Belmonte, he did not come to court. They did not want him to come to court. Wow. Right? So what we did was we said, we're going to call him. They said, we're going to call him as a, we're going to call him as a witness. And it's called a hostile witness. That's what it's called. Yeah. So when we call, when they don't want to call him. So we call him and the, well, the prosecutors filed a motion and said, we cannot allow Bishop Whitehead um, to call Brandon Belmonte. We called his lawyer and his lawyer said, all he's going to do is plead the fifth. So I said, how can he plead the fifth? How can you go to the FBI and say I committed all these crimes? And, and then they have nothing to say. And then you say, you plead the fifth. I said, no, we're not letting that happen. So the, 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 the judge said, well, let me hear the questions and let me hear what he, how he answered. So we asked him, did Bishop Whitehead try to extort you? Mm. He said, um, under, under the advice of my counsel, I plead the Fifth Amendment. Did Bishop Whitehead try to get $500,000 from you and real estate from you in exchange for um, government favors from the, mayor of Eric, um, from the mayor of New York, Eric Adams? He said, I plead the Fifth. He, I said, he, they said, we said, did you tamper with any of the recordings that you made uh, against uh, Bishop Whitehead? He played the Fifth. We are tampering the about recordings. tampering with the, the yeah about tampering with the recordings. He pled the fifth. We asked him. Um, uh, um, uh, we asked him. Did he? Um, did he set me up? Was this a sting operation? He pled the fifth. So all of the questions, and it's a bunch of more questions. All of the questions that we asked him were the questions that we would have asked him in front of the jury that would have showed the jury that he's lying. Right. So the jury don't know about these questions because he was never wow. allowed to testify right. in front of the jury. So counts two and three counts two is um, is um, is a, a temp wire fraud and count three is a temp extortion. So he didn't even show up. So there's no testimony. The only testimony is they played the recordings. He recorded me by himself six times on his own phone. And you know how they let that in? How? They let another FBI agent come in and say, you're not going to believe this. They said, I'm familiar with Bishop Whitehead's voice and I'm familiar with Brandon Belmonte's voice. So therefore, it should be let in. And he let it in. There was no authentication. Was it altered? There was no, there's, there was no real foundation. So now they're playing the audio of an informant that set me up that's now entangling the jury right so so we already went through count four count four you already know lying to the fbi agent because well you we already know that i didn't lie to them but they wanted me to set the may up and i told them i'm not doing that they asked me do you have another cell phone that we can call you on i told them no simple and then the last one was wire fraud get a load of this six years ago they said somebody uploaded on online to a company called Fundora. Now, I know a lot of you guys get pop-ups and, right. and asking you, you can be pre-qualified right. from companies that are not even banks. So they said that I um, filled this application out to a company that's not even a bank. And they said that I uploaded fraudulent documentation. Good God. Right? Now, granted, they searched my whole house. They took every computer. They took every phone. They took every electronics. Yeah. They did not find one fraudulent document. And Bishop, you're facing how many years? Well, if you look at um, uh, wire fraud, two counts, attempt wire fraud and extortion, it's probably the max yeah. would be somewhere over 45 years. The max. For uh, Just so that I'm clear and so they're clear, mm -hmm. you're facing 45 years with no corroboration testimony with the key witness pleading the fifth and no substantiated evidence. None. None at all. And the lead FBI agent 
did not testify at all because they know that he lied on six search warrants to, a, to, to six different federal judges. I'd be in the bed right now eating Doritos. <laughs> That'd be me. I, I'd just be walking around in flannel pajamas with, with the temperature up at 83, <laughs> looking for a sycamore tree just to be under. How are you maintaining your, fee, your faith uh, and your peace? Uh, you don't seem to be rattled or shaken or stirred. Uh, I've had the grace to be able to talk to you before we get in front of the camera, so you ain't putting on. Right. Uh, you, you, you are at peace. How are you maintaining it knowing in 30 days you're going back to face this system? Um, You know, there's something where people say I, you, you trust God, but what happens when you have to really live it, right? Wow. And um, I wouldn't be me if I was to panic. If I'm still wearing Fendi and they didn't change me, if I'm still wearing Louis, why should I change that? I tell people you got to keep that same energy, Yeah. right? You know, when God is blessing and you buying this and you buying that and you living life and you smiling, what, what happened when the storm come? Mm. Well, I'm going to give up now. But yeah, I'm still gonna preach to the people and tell them that you gotta have faith, right? Yeah. How, how would that work? My father was beaten, strangled to death by 16 police officers, Ooh. NYPD, just because of the color of his skin. Yeah. I had to grow up without a father, right? My mama, my grandmother raised me. You know, grew up in the in, in the mean streets of Brooklyn. Yeah. Right. I don't have a give up in my bowl, right? And it's this stereotype that Christians are punks. I ain't no punk, man, no, no, no sissy, no, no sucker. And I'm not going to fold. And whatever comes my way, I have to really trust Jesus, right? I think because I really trust him. Like, I, I, like I, I have my own relationship. You believe what you preach. Yes. And you stand on it. Yes. So how can I fold now, uh, uh, Dr. Jamal? Yeah. Like, h- how can I fold now? It is a part faith or is it part because you're not broken because you've done time before no it has nothing to do with what i did before and that was you know that that was a whole nother thing and check that out yeah i did time before and for uh, what um for grand velocity um but listen to this this was done um in suffolk county right suffolk county is the most racist county in new york right and the prosecutor Right. And, you know, they keep doing these things with these search warrants because they did these fake search warrants against me, too. But that's a whole nother thing. But the prosecutor that prosecuted me, his name was Thomas Spoda. He's in federal penitentiary right now for tampering with uh, witnesses and doing all type of stuff. Wow. So when people talk about Bishop Whitehead, you got to really know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. I'm not perfect, but I'm not wrong here. I'm innocent. And. Um, my ministry, God allowed me to start my ministry to save souls, right? To go out to the masses. People don't even know. 50 Cent gave his life to God under my ministry. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave his, he gave his life to under my ministry in 2018. And he was right in the church and I preached, get the strap. That was my message. And him and a, f- a few other known rappers that was there gave their life to Jesus Christ. I got the video and all that, but I don't post none of that. That's right. something, you know. Yeah. And um, Takashi 6 9 he gave his life to to God. Under your ministry. Under my ministry. Um, Keisha Cole, she accepted Jesus Christ. Um, I can go on and on. Yeah. I can go on and on with all of the different celebrities yeah. that entrusted me where that I pray with them behind the scenes and you will never notice because yeah. I don't got to talk, right? And that's why the devil was mad. So therefore, the devil said, I have to kill his credibility mm. because if I kill his credibility, then nobody will believe him. So this is why everybody talks about what I wear, what I drive, yeah. how much money I have. Oh, he's fake. You want to know why? Because the enemy knows that I'm a detriment to the kingdom of Satan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, the reason why, you know, and I know you have more questions, but the reason why I came on this show, and this is the first podcast that I've ever done. Thank you. 
and CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Picks, you name them. They all want me to do it. Today, and, right now. Right. And they did not get what I'm giving. Because um, Jamal or Dr. Brian, um, I believe in what God has done for you. Right. Yeah. I sit back and I watch because I don't have a lot of preacher friends yeah. at all. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, in this genre, there's a lot of jealousy. Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of competition. That's right. So um, I took a chance to be vulnerable with you. Thank you. I prayed about it. Yeah. And um, and once God gave me the clear for it, I'm, I'm all here. And I just want to say to you and your ministry, and I talk about the ministry that God's given you, yeah. I thank God for that. Because you never know who's watching. Yeah. And I watch. Yeah. And I see your love for God, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no, we as a lot. young preachers, you know, we the next ones up. Yeah. And one thing that we don't do genuinely, we don't encourage our, c encourage each other. Yeah. What we do is bless each other to blind each other. Wow. You know? Yeah, that's strong. Right. And and that and it becomes a game. Yeah. It becomes, let me tell him what I think he wants to hear. Yeah. So I can get close or I can preach at his church or he can help me out. Right. I, I tell people I don't want nothing from you. Whatever God say, do, do. But that's that's just what it is. You've amassed uh quite quite a deal of a success in real estate. Uh and uh one of uh the criticisms or critiques was you are the largest uh, black um, building owner in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You have multiple properties, which out of uh, your own mouth uh, have uh, done well. Mm -hmm. Then why was the church renting? So we own the building. Right? You ain't say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You so, don't say that. We talk, we talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the building that we were renting, yeah. right, we didn't own that one, but we owned our own church building. However, <laughs> um, I purchased the building from um, the owners that purchased it from the auction. So this building was auctioned, and I'm not going to put her name out, but a real estate agent, she's a preacher who she's like, Bishop, let me just say something on your behalf. I said, no, because this is a lot of heat. You don't, you don't want this smoke, right? But she came to me while we were still in the other building. And she said to me, Bishop, I found the church, right? These guys just bought it from the auction. Yeah. I said, introduce me to them. And I met with them and I purchased the building. The only thing is that the people that was in the building, he was actually a pastor too. And he thought that I was going to rent him the church. And I said, no, brother, I'll help you get another church. Right. But I bought this for my church. Right. And he gave me all hell. And what he did was he started to lie. And since I was in the press, they manipulated the media and said that I stole their building. So we have a building, right? I have a building that seats over 500 people. It's um, 12,000 square, square foot, right? And they're still in my building right now. Wow. Because New York City is a landlord friendly, I mean, excuse me, tenant friendly state. Yeah. So all they doing is getting me caught up, I mean, tied up in the court system. Yeah. And they're lying saying they own the property when they don't. So we've been battling with them for now over two years and they're in my property paying no rent at all. But yet they're doing interviews and saying that I stole their church. And I wow. even I never even knew it existed until my real estate Right. First, it came to me, right. and I purchased the church. So now everybody, you'll see people saying, oh, he stole the church, he stole the... That's all yeah. lies. I tell people, go on Acaris. There's a there's a website in New York. It's called Acaris.com. You will be able to see the DNA, the history of this building. Wow. All you got to do is research, and you're going to see that Bishop Whitehead owns the building. That's it. it there, there's no hanky-panky. There's no other stuff, right. but yet, once again, they capitalized off yeah, of no, what right. I was going through. Yeah. A, a bishop said to me, uh, after being famous, the only thing you can do is become infamous. Uh, and uh, I believe that God can help you from cancer. 
I believe that God can bring people out of rehab and out of addiction. Uh, but you are believing God can restore a name. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got so much faith that you believe God can do it in a small window of time. Yes. Uh, I'm praying that uh, God will do that uh, for you. I'm uh, grateful that uh, you trusted me to be able to create space for you to be able to uh, share. Uh, and I hope that particularly people in the body will not judge a book by its cover, even if the cover of the book got on Fendi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That we still got to stand with it. Know that I am praying with you and for you. And uh, I'm believing that we have not heard, not even the beginning of Bishop Lamar, not Lamar, Lamar Whitehead. Hey. And I uh, know that you got somebody in Atlanta who is praying for you. You all, I want you to please uh, pray for our brother uh, because the fog is lifting and you know we only do one thing. We got to be clear. Yeah. Thank you so much, Frank. Love you, man. Thank you, brother. Love you more than that. I need you to do me a favor. Please make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, to Jamal Bryant podcast. Let's be clear on our YouTube channel, as well as anybody you know who uh, thought they knew Bishop, said something about Bishop, or remarked about Bishop. I want you to please send this to them so that they can be clear on who the Bishop really is. God bless you. Love you. Thanks. And we'll see you next time.